OK, so let's go through elements 1 to 3 of the shortlist criteria in more detail so that you know exactly how to score your items in the spreadsheet. Number 1, FBA. As we said in the opening video in this module, the first criteria is about determining what type of seller is selling the item that we're researching. The good news is that there are only three types of sellers on Amazon. Number one, products that are sold by Amazon themselves. Number two, products that are sold by a third party merchant and fulfilled by Amazon. This is what we're gonna be doing when we launch our business. And number three, products that are sold and fulfilled by a third party merchant. The three is very interesting to us. Why? Because in this case, the seller is actually sending the item out themselves and they're not using the FBA program. If they're not using FBA in their business, then the customers who are buying from them can't get expedited shipping times and the other benefits that come as part of their prime membership with Amazon. The reality is that using FBA will increase your sales on the platform by at least 30%, if not more. By not using this, these sellers are at a distinct disadvantage compared to sellers like us who leverage this incredible service and get access to those prime customers. If we see a listing that's fulfilled and sold by a third party seller, then immediately we know we have an advantage. It is of course important to double check that the item they're selling can be fulfilled by Amazon at this point. Sometimes sellers have to self-fulfill because their item violates Amazon's FBA terms and conditions. If it is simply a choice by the seller, then great. Now, a lot of people get hung up and scared when they see an item that is sold by Amazon. Sometimes people even assume that they should stop researching the product immediately as they think it's a no-go, but that is completely not true. Whenever you see Amazon selling and fulfilling an item, all this means is that the brand sells directly to Amazon. Yes, there are certain advantages they receive by doing this, such as being able to use images in their product listings, etc. However, the fact that an item is sold by Amazon really doesn't mean anything on its own. This product or type of product may still be a very viable opportunity and also now a logical choice. So when you see this, simply select sold by Amazon in the 4S product spreadsheet and move on to the next criteria. The great thing about us using FBA is that in the eyes of a consumer, it looks like it's being sold by Amazon by virtue of the fact that it's being fulfilled by them. It is a phenomenally powerful selling tool at our disposal. I've told you before that product research is very much a blend of art and science. This first, first criteria is one of the science parts of the process. You simply identify what the seller type is and mark it in the spreadsheet. Don't overthink this part. Product reviews. At its core, this criteria element asks us to score how many product reviews the listing we've uncovered possesses. Now, before you jump in and say, but guys, I thought you said there was no correlation between sales and product reviews. Let me tell you the reason I'm doing this, that we're looking at the number of product reviews is to get an idea for how established the listing is. If we sell on a listing that has 500 reviews, then we know that this item likely has a particularly strong sales history on Amazon. Does this mean we can't compete and we should move on? No, it just means that the listing has been around for a while and more importantly, has generated pretty significant revenue. When we mark this in the spreadsheet, there are four options which are, number one, 500 or more reviews, number two, 50 to 499 reviews, three, five to 49 reviews, and four, less than five reviews. Identifying the longevity of the listing and the item is important here. We don't want to get involved in items that are trendy, remember. So we're using this criteria element as a way to figure out this part. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, in my experience, I haven't seen a direct correlation between the number of reviews and the number of sales an item generates. I can tell you from personal experience that I've had many items that sold as well with no reviews as they did when they had 15 organic reviews. I can also tell you that this particular listing sold no better with 15 reviews than it did with 300. Reviews are not the be all and end all. So no matter what all the gurus might tell you, in fact, many of the tactics these sellers were employing are now in fact in violation of Amazon's terms of service. All that we've got to do now is to score this element accurately. The spreadsheet will do the calculations for you. Let's look at element three, listing quality. Now we're going to look at the listing itself critically and determine how good it is. The reason we're doing this is because a high quality listing with outstanding images, quality bullets, a descriptive keyword rich title and a powerful description go a long way towards helping us create significant conversion numbers. If our competitors listings are poor quality, 
in that their product title, bullets, images, or descriptions are poor or limited in detail, then we have a big opportunity to outmarket them with our listing. You see, creating powerful offers is one of the most important things in business, but a great offer that's poorly described won't matter all that much as consumers aren't able to see the value if they've little or nothing to do to go on in terms of detail about the offer. As you'll likely be able to see, this listing element can be considered quite subjective as there's no one answer that's 100% true. Why? Because people's perceptions come into play. What you believe is good, I may believe isn't, and vice versa. The way we get around this is to ask ourselves whether or not each of the listing elements we've listed above are present or not. By present, I mean, are they presented in such a way the average consumer would have enough information to go on when making a purchasing decision? I'll dive into each of these in a moment to show you what we, I mean exactly. For now, just know that I'm going to score each listing element by giving one point for each element if it is indeed present. If it is not present, we mark it as a zero. If it's semi-present, then we give it a half point. Let's go deeper into each element to give you complete clarity on this step. I mentioned the four core listing elements are product images. We give this one point if high quality images are present. Title, one point given if present. Bullets, one point given if present. And finally, product description. We'll give one point for this also if present. Let's look at each element critically now so that you know whether to give it a point or not. First, we'll start with product images. The basic rule behind images are as follows. Firstly, the images must be high resolution, rich media images, meaning they are zoomable when you hover over them with your computer or laptop mouse. Secondly, for us to consider images as present, we require at least three images that are all high resolution, rich media as above. Next, the images must show the product from multiple angles. We would only consider images as present when all these pieces are satisfied. The reason that I'm strict on this element is that high quality images can increase your conversion rate from anywhere between 30% to 55% when you're creating your own listings. Make certain that you follow these same rules. We have the title element. Firstly, the title must describe what the product actually is without keyword stuffing. In other words, the title must describe the product without stuffing in multiple loosely related words that in no way describe the product. An example of this would be have fun swimming as part of a product title for a pool rake. The keyword swimming might be relevant, but the other two in no way describe the product or what it does. Therefore, the listing must contain clear and accurate keywords at all times. Now, if the listing you see contains literally one keyword, for example, blue pool rake, then we'd consider this title as not being present. Why? Because it's extremely poor and isn't using all the available characters and keyword opportunities available to be found by browsing customers. If the listing title you see is descriptive and contains multiple appropriate keywords, then we'd consider this present and therefore we'd score it a one. Bullets, like titles, must be descriptive, clear and concise. They shouldn't contain stuffed keywords or excessive amounts of loosely related content. They should explain what the product is, what it does, and what's included when somebody purchases the item, as well as explaining the specific product features, such as the size of the product or important components, as well as the volume that the product holds if this is relevant. The best way to think of bullets is to ask yourself, what information does a consumer need to make this purchase? Bullets shouldn't contain delivery or company information in any way, and shouldn't be multiple lines of text. If your bullets describe the product well and contain appropriately used keywords, as well as specific product sizing information, if relevant, then we'd consider this satisfied and score it as a one. If the bullets are just a few words with little or no effort put into them, with no mention of keyword information, then we'd consider this not satisfied. Finally, we move into descriptions. The thing about descriptions is that they're not overly critical to the item selling successfully, especially not the types of items that we're going to uncover. That said, we do recommend having a well-written one. For now, all that you want to determine is whether or not there actually is a description present. Now, if there is a description present on the listing, then the key determination of whether we consider it present or not is whether the description is well laid out and clearly written. Again, if the listing satisfies this criteria, we mark it as a one. If it is a jumbled up paragraph with random sizing information, then we'd consider it not present and mark it as a zero. Descriptions aren't heavily weighted 
in the 4S product spreadsheet as they're not a make or break item when it comes to succeeding on Amazon. Okay, so with the product listings, you're going to score each element of the listing on whether that piece of the listing is present or not. If all four pieces of the listing are present and satisfy the rule we just laid out for you, we'll score that listing as a four. If only three elements are present, let's imagine for instance that the product had no description, then we'd mark it as a three and it would be considered good. Put your score for each listing into the spreadsheet and you're done.